Hello everyone, this is now going to be a review of question 4 of this year's IMO problems. If you're not already aware, for the IMO, um, it comes in two sets of three questions, and so questions 1 and 4 would be the first out of three questions on each day, which is why they would naturally be the easiest questions, or at least that's supposed to be the intention. Whether that turns out to be the case um, does depend on your individual preference of topics. So what we have this time is an inequality. It's a pretty interesting inequality because it also mentions integers. So an is going to be equal to this expression down here, which is the square root of the sum of your first n numbers and the sum of the reciprocals of the first n numbers. So you multiply them and square root it, you get an. We are supposed to prove that a2023 is greater than or equals to 3034, and there are a couple of interesting things we can say straight away. Now, the first thing is that this is a pretty well-known expression in the sense that you get a very common and simple bound on this using AMGM, Cauchy Schwartz, or AMHM, depending on your preference. So if we were to let's say just use uh, AMGM, it means that the inside is greater than or equal to the first bracket is going to be n times the geometric mean. The second one also gives you n times the geometric mean. And so if both of these cancel out, that's n squared. And after you square root it, it means that a n is greater than or equals to n. Now this is the so-called uh, trivial bound that you would get and it is attained if all of them are equal to each other. Now you can see that what we are asked to prove is a little bit more than that. We are asked to prove that it is going to be at least 3034 not at least 2023. So one thing that we are told is pairwise different and pairwise different means that at the very least we understand that equality cannot hold so it would be more than 2023. But if I just nudge each of them a little bit it is going to be quite easy to nudge it to 2024. So the reason why it ends up being at 3034 must have something to do with the is an integer for every n. Along the way, if n equals to 1, it should be an integer. If n equals to 2, it should also be an integer. If n equals to 3, it should also be an integer. And so we just want to understand why that's the case. So let's start by looking at how the small cases would look like. Now, a1 is just going to be 1, so there's nothing to say there. Now, a2 looks like this. Now, as we have mentioned, this is going to be more than 2, and so if it's an integer, it should be at least 3. Now let's say that I look at a3 Now, I can't just use the fact that it is more than 3 so it should be at least 4 because then all I'm doing is basically getting n plus 1 from a n that's pretty far away from what I would like which based on this here is a2023 is greater than or equal to 3034. Now I can feel that these numbers are a little bit suspicious. So I want to understand what sort of thing I would like to show. And a hint would be that, well, if this is at least 3, then I can just use this and say that it's at least 4. 
because it's bigger than the previous one. Now I cannot keep on using it's just bigger than the previous one to get a plus one, plus one, plus one each time. That is not going to be good enough. If I just keep on doing plus one each time, then that's going to suggest to me that all I have is n plus one again. But I realized that this 3034, this is about 3000, this is about 2000. It means that it's about 3 over 2 in terms of ratio. And here I have managed to increase it by 3 from 1 to 4. So what I would like to do is that I would like to make sure that each time I take two steps, I will increase by at least 3 because if A3 is at least 4, and then A5 is at least 7, A7 is at least 10, and so on, uh, this should work because it would give me 20, 22 over 2, which is 1011 steps of size 3. So starting from the first one, you would just get 1011 times 3, which is 3034. So this would work as long as I can show that each time you make two steps, the value must increase by at least 3. So let's write it like this. This is what I want. But I also need to use the fact that everything here is integer. Because as I said earlier, we know that in theory you could just nudge everything by just like 0 0.0001 and you would be able to, let's say, push it up from, for example, 1 to 1.01. And it would not be possible to do better than increasing by 1 since we know that if they're all the same, a n is equal to n. So which means that you could theoretically get a1 is 1 and a2 is just a bit more than 2, a3 is just a bit more than 3, if not for the integer condition. And so therefore, instead of doing this, I'm going to just show that it increases by more than 2. That's enough, right? Because if it increases by more than 2, means it increases by at least 3 due to the integer condition. Now, how am I going to do this? What I need to do is to look at the terms and understand what has been increased. So I'm going to, uh, for just convenience sake, I'm going to let uh, cn be the sum in the first bracket and uh, dn be the sum in the second bracket. Right, so that um, an is square root of cn dn and an plus 2 is the square root of cn plus 2 dn plus 2. Now, what I want to see would be the difference between an plus 2 and an which should just involve a few terms, right? The insights are quite similar. So let's just check and see whether we are able to get something like this. So cn plus 2 means add up the first n plus 2 terms. That would just be the first n terms and two more. And likewise for dn, two more reciprocals. Now ideally what I want this to be is that I want this to be more than an plus 2 squared, the inside. So not plus, yeah. cn dn square rooted, the plus is on the outside. So I want it to be more than this. Now, I have certainly got C and Dn from here. I also know that I have got this times this is going to be 
greater than 4. Now, greater than or equals to 4, but greater than strictly since they are not the same. Right? This is just a special case of what we wrote at the very start, which is that if you have got a bunch of n numbers and a bunch of n reciprocals, it will be greater than or equals to n squared, where equality holds if they are all the same. So all I need to do is to check whether the remaining terms, which is cn times the two reciprocals and dn times the two summons directly, I would like this to be greater than or equals to 4 times the square root of cn dn, which turns out to just be true directly by flinging everything into amgm. Since if you just took the four terms here, which is cn over xn plus 1, cn over xn plus 2, and then dn xn plus 1, dn xn plus 2, the xn plus 1 and xn plus 2 will cancel off, and you'll be just left with 4 square root cn dn. So our conclusion is simply that we got exactly what we want, and it is true that an plus 2 is going to be bigger than square root cn dn plus 2, which is an plus 2, and so we are done. For a question like this, it's very important to look at the numbers. Right? When numbers look very coincidental, try to figure out what is it a special case of. And so once you've discovered that the special case here is that any time you move forward two terms, it increases by 3, then the proof turned out to be pretty simple. So thanks again for watching. As before, let me know if there's any of the other IMO problems that you would really like me to go through. And see you again soon.